Hi everyone, today I want to share a little bit of insight on some of my process and behind the scenes on the balloons animation meme. Let's jump right into it. First, I need to mention and emphasize the importance of reference footage. For almost every scene in the balloons meme, I filmed my own reference footage and I can't stress enough how helpful that was. To summarize, basically I'd have an idea of what I want to animate based on my storyboard and vision, then I would loop the audio and film myself dancing or doing whatever motion I needed. Then I would take a long video with many takes. Then I'd clip the video with the take I wanted. Then I would import the reference video into my program, trace over the video to get the motions down, and add my own style and of course transform myself into the character. Today I'm going to show you this process. So first, like I said, we have the reference video. Uh, it's already cut down to how I want it. I start by converting this video into a GIF so I can import it into Adobe Animate and manipulate the frames. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my video and just drag it into Adobe Media Encoder. I'm going to have this video be converted into a GIF file so I can import it into Adobe Animate. So then I just click the little play button here and it's going to go ahead and convert that video into a GIF. And it's all done. Then I'm just going to go over to Animate here. Now I'm here in Adobe Animate, and I've got my audio looped on the segment that I'm going to animate. To get my GIF file into the program, all I have to do is drag and drop it into an open layer. So now my GIF file of my reference video is inside my Adobe Animate program. So you can see the reference video inside the file and it's coming out of my canvas here. And it's animated on the ones. So we're going to see how I handle that. First, what I have to do is sync up this video to the audio so that everything lines up. All right, now that it's mostly synced up, what I'm gonna do is make this so that it's animated on the twos. So what I'm gonna do here is, what I'm doing here is basically deleting every other frame and then inserting a frame into the frames that I don't delete, so that it's basically the exact same animation, but just animated on the twos. It's not slowed down or anything, that's why I'm deleting every other frame. So now what I'm going to do is select all the frames at once, and then I'm going to resize it so it fits within the canvas space. So I'm just going to select everything, make sure everything is selected, then just hold shift so that it stays proportional, then drag it into the middle of the canvas here, and then resize it how I want. Obviously I don't need the whole top part in my animation, so I'm just going to center like the figure within the space, how it would be animated. Alright, now I'm going to set up some keyframes, some blank keyframes, where my animation is going to go. So I'm just going to have some empty layers here, and then I'm going to make them keyframed on every other frame, so that it will be animated on the twos. So now I'm going to begin tracing over my video basically rotoscoping it. So what I usually do to start is I will outline the head first. So let's see how I do that. So basically I'm just tracing over the video where the head position is and drawing a circle outline where the head will be. Basically just using my reference video as a guide and this video isn't 
quite long enough for all the frames that I need, so I'm just gonna kind of guess at this point what, what the frames would be. So there I have my head animated with circles. Now that my circles are animated, I'm going to add some little direction lines to indicate which way the face is pointing. Again, using my reference video as a guide. And this is a rough guide. You can see I'm not exactly tracing on the, like directly off of the reference, but sort of just taking the general idea of what the reference is showing and sort of translating that onto the canvas here. Alright, you can see that looks pretty good already. Usually what I'll do next is I will outline the shoulders and body. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, basically directly tracing right over the reference. Then I'll trace the lines indicating the sides of the body. Then next I'm going to outline the hands and arms. And obviously these will become paws, so I'm pretty much going to directly translate those hands into paws when I'm sketching them. But still keeping the same gesture and motion from the reference video just translating it into pause. And as you can see, I'm sort of keeping some things separate onto separate layers here. It sort of just helps to keep everything separate. You're especially going to want to separate the head because usually when I trace it from the reference, it ends up being a little bit too small. So I'm able to have those layers separate so that I can manipulate them separately, resizing them, do what, do what I need to do. So, Alrighty, now that I'm done aligning the paws, what I'm going to do now is go back into the face and add more details into that. So, like I was saying about separating the layers, usually the head turns out a little bit too small, so what I'm going to do is kind of make it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to use my Select All Frames button. And then I'm going to select all the head layers here. Hold down shift to keep it proportional and just make it a little bit bigger there. And sometimes I also have to move it up a little bit. So now I'm going to start adding in more details like adding the snout and the neck and the face details and all that. So let's do that. Usually for this I will outline it in a darker color, not only for you to help see it better, but also if I make a mistake, I can easily erase it, so look at this. Let's say I didn't like how that was looking, I can just erase that color because in anime it kind of separates out anything that's a different color, so now I deleted the snout, but I still have the outline of the head so I don't have to delete everything at once and everything's gone, so it's kind of just a good trick to have in mind if you're using Adobe Animate or something similar. And obviously for this part, my reference video is human, so I don't have a snout, so I'm kind of making this up. But having drawn animals for a very long time, I sort of know what I'm doing and uh, I know sort of how I would like it to look. Tracing those direction lines really helps with the snout in particular because I know what direction I want it to be pointing in. Alright, that's looking pretty good. So from here, I usually like to kind of sketch in where the nose is going to go very roughly, just like a big splotch, like a circle where the nose would be, just to give myself an idea. And then from here, I'll start adding more details into the face. Um, sometimes I don't really have a set order for this, sometimes I'll do the mouth next, sometimes I'll do the eyes, but adding in those details. Alright, next I'm going to do the lip sync. Um, lip sync is something I enjoy. I think I'm good at it. 
and it comes pretty naturally to me because of my experience, but I know some people can struggle with it. Basically, the best advice I can give you is to make sure that it, well, syncs up with the actual audio. Not just what you think it should be saying, just like listen. Sometimes if the, the part is like really fast, it can be tough to like sync up all the, the, the mouth movements and everything. So just like listen carefully to what each frame is, is saying in the audio and draw that mouth shape. And in general, the best advice I can give for lip sync is to just, you know, like sound out or like act out the, the sound with your own mouth and see what mouth shape that you're making when you, when you produce that sound and just draw that. And you just always just want to be playing it back to see if it like actually looks like it syncs up. All right, that's looking pretty solid. And now I'm just going to keep on adding more details to the face, including the pupils, then the head shape, and lastly, I will be adding the ears and hair already. And now I'll be adding the head shape. So basically I just flesh out the shape of the head adding the forehead and cheeks so that the face is more fleshed out. Okay, so I want to show you a little trick that I do to keep the head sizes consistent. So what I do is I make a new layer and on this layer I make uh, an ellipse shape, a circle. Make it sort of a lighter color so it's less easily seen. Basically, you're going to go to your first frame and line it up with the head. And make it the same size as the first frame of your head. Then you're going to follow through each frame, aligning this circle that you just made with each head and making sure that it's the same size as that circle. And if it's not, adjust accordingly. So like the second frame, it's about the same size, but maybe I'll make it a little bit smaller to make it really that same size. Line it up with the middle. Adjust a little bit. And just keep doing that throughout the animation. As you can see, it's very easy to end up accidentally making the head bigger than it was on the first frame. It's a Definitely a very easy mistake to make, especially if you're newer to animating, or even if not, it's just something that's hard to do to keep the head consistent on every frame, the size. So it's good to do this little trick to make sure that that head size is really just staying the same throughout the whole animation. And then you're just going to want to play it back, make sure everything still looks okay, is still smoothly animated and make any adjustments as needed. And I feel like now that I've resized all those heads, overall it's looking a little bit small, so I'm just gonna go ahead and select all those frames again, and then make it a little bit bigger. And next I'm gonna add the necks. I'm gonna take my reference footage back out for this as a guide. Now we are to the fun part, in my opinion, which is adding the ears. And I will also be adding the hair and fluff on the cheeks. This is my favorite part to animate, all the secondary motion stuff. Because I love just animating the dragon, have the ears and the hair like flop around and stuff. So let me show you how to do that. First, just draw them normally on the first frame. And you're sort of just going to animate them straight ahead as the head is moving following that motion and just having them drag behind. So the head is moving slightly up, I'm going to start with one ear at a time. So I'm just going to add that ear slightly moved up a little bit. It's moving slightly to the right of the screen, so have it, have it move very slightly. Same again. It's not really moving much, so it's mostly staying in place. Slightly moving up. Alright, now this is like a drastic change in motion. 
the head is tilting in one direction. So basically the tip is going to sort of drag behind. So you're going to have... tip is probably going to stay around the same area, but it's dragging it. It's moving the bottom of the ear, obviously, with the head. But that tip is like dragging behind. And sort of following through, you're going to animate that tip coming forward like this. Still going. Sort of settling out. And again, the, the head is starting to move, so that tip is just going to drag a little. And this is like quite drastic again. So you're going to have the tip really be dragged back. And then it comes forward. Again, it's going to be dragging as the head pulls the ear in the other direction. It looks pretty good. I'm going to address some things though. And I'm going to do the second ear, dragging behind. Alrighty, those ears look pretty good, and now I'm going to add some fluff. Sometimes it's good to separate elements with different colors so that it's easier to tell apart which elements are what, to stay organized when you're animating. So I'm just going to add some fluff there. This is another secondary element, and again, you're really going to want to emphasize the dragging behind, so. So it's going to be moving again with the head's motion. Alright, now here's that one drastic motion that the head is taking first. So the tips are definitely going to be dragging behind. They're like still going while the head is turning. And of course when the head pulls the other way, it's going to be dragging behind. And I'm going to outline the other fluff. And lastly I'm going to add the hair. It's kind of moving up with the head. Nothing special yet. And now that the head is rotating, the hair again is going to drag behind. And now the head is pulling the hair this way. It's sort of swooping over and changing direction. Alrighty, and I think I'm pretty satisfied with how this outline turned out. And I think I'm done outlining this, and I think from here I'm ready to start the line art, which we will move into next.